Hello everyone, and welcome, not really, it's not a let's play at all, welcome to my concept, proof of concept video for the first part of my calculator. Now, I know there's been a lot of Minecraft calculators already, but this one's a little different. I'm trying to make it as close to real life as possible, and... The first part of that, as far as I'm concerned, is the display. And this is what, this is my proof of concept for the display. And basically, the thought is this. All the Minecraft calculators I've seen, and I'm sure there's some that aren't, but all the ones that I've seen require you to input numbers in binary, which is really annoying and hard for people who don't know binary. So I've done this and I've removed that I've done this basically to remove that step and this is a really just a proof of concept because it goes from 0 to 5 and there's a reset button here on the input but it's a uh, could be as many as you want it's really easy to expand it so I'll show you that later and I have a better input option I'll show you um, so let's say you want to do the number 43 Okay. Well, in binary, you'd have to put in the binary 43 with your torches or whatever. On a calculator, you'd press the numbers 4 and then 3, and you would have 43. So that's exactly what you have here. You press the number 4, and up here it's going to display number 4. So then you can go from there. You could do 4 plus, 4 minus, whatever. But let's say you want to make it a bigger number. You just press the number 3. And it shifts the 4 over to the 10's place and puts the 3 in the 1's place. And this is only too wide, but you can, you can also expand it to an infinite number of digits really easily. And this is stackable. Like, if you mess up and you mint 34, then you just press the 4 button. It'll shift the 3 over to the 10's place and put the 4 in the 1's place. It's still glitchy, though. Ah! It was just a uh, one of those one tick button press glitches. Was it over there too? Yeah, these pistons should have retracted the blocks, but for some reason the blocks didn't want to retract. Oh well. But yeah, it worked. So there you go. And then you can hit the clear button here. I don't know. Clear out both numbers. It'll shift the four over and clear it all. Okay. So, zero is not necessary. You can do the number 10, just do 1. So you have the number 1 in the 1's place, so you press the 0, and you move the 1 over the 10's place, the 0 in the 1's place. So, and that works, and you can press the 5, and it will shift the 0 over and put a 5 there. 1, shift the 5 over, put the 1 there. So, yeah, that's the basic idea of how the input's going to work. And that's basically all I've gotten like really really done so far. And I'll sh I'll show you basically how it works here. It's color coded. And you can see all right now it's all one color wood except for right here. And that's because this regular wood stands for the you know the first number you put in. The dark wood stands for the second number you put in. So everything that's light wood is associated, or not light wood, regular wood is associated with just the, t uh, you know, the information computer pieces required to get this to work. And there's gonna be a whole, basically a copy of this for the dark wood part. And then light wood, which is all, all of it's right here right now, is going to be the actual computer that does the computations, which I have a model running over there. So basically what happens is, you press a number, let's say two. So it puts two in the one's place. Okay, what you've done down here is first of all, oop, let's get around here. Can I get out? Ah, get out this way. See the slit up here. This is basically an RS NOR latch taking advantage of the new locking repeaters. So you pulse in the one and it locks into the on state going this way. So that's basically what this whole thing is. So then it, the number goes out here. So number two is out here. This is what's going to the computer, which is not done yet. And then it goes this way, up this glowstone. 
into my display computer system thing here binary to uh, seven segment converter I believe it's called right here and it tells which parts of the segment need to light up to make a two and then it goes through all this crazy mess of busing over to the two over here okay but that's not all once it gets through this converter it goes it gets to this which is all locked right now you see all these locks on these repeaters this goes up to the second chain here but it's all locked now so we come down here we'll press the second button we'll just press five five okay now what happens is is it unlocks these just temporarily just long enough to see here you see this repeaters locked on off now instead of on like all the other ones just long enough to know which number was here and then it sends that information up to here and put displays it on this the tens counter and then as soon as this these have locked and unlocked and realized which one needs to go up there a reset pulse gets sent along this line here right along here which resets all these RS nor latches and then accepts and then tells what button you pressed again and sends that to the ones place so we pressed 5 so now 5 is lit up down there so we got the 5 lit up down here going to the computer and we got the 5 in here except now we also have the 2 up here so 25 and then the clear button just basically is a master reset the clear button goes along these resets on the RS snores and also resets the locks on here so these are all basically RS snore latches powered by locking repeaters which I think help make it more compact I also just want to take advantage of the new uh, locking repeaters so I did some testing over here so just basic different ideas here this was my first attempt to get information in one input and transfer it to the other one so here if you send it on so now that one's on you power it and now that one gets the information and then you've got to reset the whole thing with this torch there we go so that's the idea is that once you have one input activated it unlocks that one and allows for the second input to be activated and then over here this is the input it's going to be for my calculator it's going to be a standard 10 digit button pad like this so 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 just like a calculator would be not like a phone which would be 1 2 3 4 5 6 so and I did get all these this took me a while to do too actually figure out a way to separate the outputs from all these buttons so they don't overlap with each other but they're all right here and so basically I mean this will be really easy to connect I just gotta build this over here and that's actually been the next process in the step and probably somewhere my next checkup video will be after that is gonna be I'll put the keypad down here and connect it to these buttons instead of having those buttons and then that keypad will be able to control this which is here I'll show you this so we just have a number here we'll do 21 I guess 21 okay well then you'd press the enter button this is just this calculator right now for the time frame is just going to be for addition because I am familiar with how to do addition I believe I have an idea in my head of how to do it at least and we'll figure out if I actually know so you put 21 you press enter okay then you'll press the next button this little keypad here that I'll have and that number will come up here and once you have that number selected you press enter again and there'll be a screen somewhere I don't know where that'll display your whole answer so that's the idea and we can run over and see the computer I'm going to use for the calculator if we want you guys have actually already seen it in my second let's play episode I showed it off and it's wasn't originally built for a calculator I'll tell you that much it was built for something entirely different but I'm going to use the computer for my calculator and this is the computer here Oh, fell in a hole this is the computer here it's super compact it's like my, my favorite design 
It's a modification of the design I had over here, which had shorting issues. This one does not have shorting issues, and it's super compact, super fast. I love it. Works really well. It's going to be the brains of my calculator. It's going to take two or three of these, actually, to power the calculator, but still pretty small. So that's the idea. It should be up and running here soon, I hope. This staggered, towering, I don't know how you call it, stacking display, I guess, where it stacks the numbers and shifts them over, took me just about a day to finish. Staying up all night drove me crazy, but I got it. So, yeah, that's the idea. And I will keep you guys posted. Thanks for watching.